Hello, welcome back. If this is your first time stopping by, hi, I'm Acacia, and here I offer tips, tools, and inspiration for the woman in progress. As a business owner, wife, and mom of two boys, I'm often asked how I get things done. I'll be the first to say that I don't ever get everything done, but with a lot of praying, some planning, and deliberate doing, I manage to keep things together. Today, I'm going to show you how I have my planner set up for 2021. I'm super excited to share with you my planner set up this year. This is actually my first time doing it online. Um, a lot of the times with my clients and friends who are looking to explore uh, better self-management, I show them how I have my planner set up and what my process is like. Um, this year, my planner is my planner cover is by cover up couture i don't know how i found them well i kind of do they were following me on my personal page and then i followed them back and oh my oh they have the absolute cutest planner covers and i'm a happy planner girl i i love their inserts i like the size but it's always hard to find something that's elegant to put your planner in but this year oh, Thanks, Cover Up Couture. I'll have their information linked below. This is a, um, I think it's, I think it's uh, called the New York. Um, I, I forgot to pull out the. They have a, it's a elastic thing with a cute gold charm on the top that you can use to keep your planner closed when you're out and about. But because I have it put away in the drawer where I keep my wallets, it's not out right now, but I'll try and remember to have it out for another video. But this is um, by Cover Up Couture. Awesome, awesome product. Well, right now, since the planner is closed, I want to show you some things. Don't mind this part here because it's actually so that I don't show pages that I don't want to show. So these aren't usually in my planner. Here's the top view here. And you you can see the tabs. You probably can't read them. But I have six top, top tabs. And the sections in the top tabs are... On the front cover, this is a journaling card. And in this section, it's just primarily deco purposes. Um, I like to see pretty. I'm one of those people, I'm inspired by everything beautiful. So I like to open my planner, my purse, and see order. And this planner affords me the ability to do it the way that I want to. When I was in my old happy planner, cover. I didn't have this section, so there was a lot of bulk inside my actual planner because I just didn't have a place to put some of the things that I that I enjoy having close by. So this is um, one of the Names of God journaling cards from my shop. Um, it's Jehovah Jireh, which is at the very bottom, and it says the Lord will provide. I chose to put this here because I am an entrepreneur. All of my income comes from um, several uh, different businesses. I own a PR firm where I work in the publishing industry, and it covers books, film, and music. So um, I have clients in all of those spaces and you have to really plan. But what I've learned over the past few years is that the Lord will provide. It's not necessarily about me. My responsibility is to go in and do good work and the Lord will provide whatever I, I need after that, whether it's more knowledge, more networking opportunities, more of the right relationships. Um, so that's why that's there to let it be a reminder that I'm not the provider. God is. And of course, these are some cute, look, cutesy things. And I met um, the owner of My Promise Notes online. She has the cutest journaling card. So, of course, I had to put some in here because, you know, women support women. And she has some awesome things. And I realized that I don't have to create everything. There is enough money out here for me to make money and other people in my space to make money. And it's all about collaboration and 
she has the best products. I'm going to also release her. I'm going to also connect you to her shop at the bottom. Now, this is an item that I'm thinking about adding to my shop. I always have something similar to this in my planner. Um, and it's essentially icons and different wording that I use often. So I like to have it here. I do one for every month. And these, this is everything I use on a monthly basis. So here, of course, I can just pull these things off my planner, stick off the sheet, stick them in my planner, and I have it here. And I don't have to worry about it being everywhere because it can be decorative and it takes up a little space. And this is just a piece of scrapbooking paper that I had laying around that I like. Um, I like leaves, florals, like I said, anything pretty. And so I added it in um, after I finished another project and didn't just want those sheets, pieces laying around. This is also a card from um, my promise notes. And I absolutely love this because I was inspired to read the book of Esther when I was a teen at church. Someone um, made a comment about Esther and I was like, wow, let me look her up. Let me learn about her. And when I saw this, perhaps this is the moment you were created for Esther 4 and 14. Um, this past year hasn't been super difficult for me, thank God. But it, it, it's also given me an opportunity to sit still and just allow myself to be stretched. So, um, and I realized that this is my time. This little cutie, I left it on because it's still winter. It's a snowman. And I think it was, I'm almost positive it was a free gift from um, the company that I received my planner cover from. This page is just what I use to protect what's on the inside. What I found is a lot of the times with your planner, the front page gets kind of messy and dirty. So in order to prevent that, I just used a really thick piece of cardstock, cut it out and punched it to put in. And I used just a regular piece of, another piece of cardstock on the back. Um, I like having two ink pens. So I use this to add my ink pen, my red one, because this is, I go back at the end of the week and make notes every week in, in my planner for better, of course, so I can plan better the next week and to highlight things I did do and didn't do. And of course, this is my dashboard. I am learning to really love myself in this season of my life. Um, so I'm I, I'm constantly reminding myself as much as I like beautiful things, I can also, I am a beautiful person and I can be beautiful inside and out. <laughs> That's my name. It's Makesha. And of course, this sheet of paper is just as a used as a separator so that you can see through. Um, a 2021 at a glance calendar just with my word of the year which is cultivate we'll get back into that a little bit later um i'm gonna hide that because those are my personal goals and every year around november i start praying about my word for the year and i come up it's a new word every year so after that word comes and most of the time i'm praying about it and i start seeing um, certain words or the hints of certain words and the concepts of certain words. So then I finally settle on it. And this year, of course, my word is cultivate. And of course, one of the definitions for cultivate is here. And I get a, a guide in scripture, but I take it a little bit further. I am a writer and I'm also a career student. I like to learn. And one of the things that helps me to really understand my word of the year is to really break the word down. So I take portions of the definition. I take portions of the guiding scripture. I take what's relative to that word and build out my editorial calendar for the year. This again is from my promise notes. Go by this first shop. It says grace upon grace. And don't we need grace when we're praying? And we say grace so when we pray. Um, and then this is something that I created, of course, to support my mantra of pray. Um, it says, therefore, I tell you what, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. You can't establish plans if you don't believe in what you're praying for. So I, I believe that when you pray, you have to believe it, but you also have a responsibility to write out your vision and, and take the action necessary to get it done. This is something that I created because 
my prayer journal is something that I keep separate from my calendar. But I also like to be reminded through, during the day what I'm praying for if I get a couple of moments or if I just feel led to pray. So at the top, I usually cover things that I'm praying for, what for myself, things that I'm praying for, for my family, my business, and my clients. But here is prayer requests. Because I keep this with me while I'm working during the day, Parts of my job responsibility is monitoring social media. So I spend a significant amount of time on social media. Here is where I actually, when I see someone asking for prayer, I, I use sticky notes and I use sticky notes. And what I'm going to do is just show you how I do that. I'm going to flip back here. This piece of paper, <laughs> I actually keep a few sticky, sticky notes on it. So I'm going to pull those out. So here I keep the sticky notes that I like to use. Most of my most of my productivity items will fall in red, black, or gray. And of course, you're going to have some white because you can't get away from white with paper. So I would take this, I pull this out, and I can take my go back to it so you can see how we do that. Sorry for the glare. So I try not to stay on those pages so long. So every week after I've settled down what I'm going to be praying for as I plan the, the next week, I actually take one of these and I'll put it in here. So you'll have that for um, family and the things that I'm praying for on like a personal level. I'll put those items here and I'll take... Probably I'll take these. I think I have four. I'm gonna end up needing to replace these, um, but I'll take those and put them down to um, pray for, so that I'll know if I'm online. I can actually just write here about things that need to be prayed for. And these actually end up being transferred into my prayer journal. Um, I'll just take some washi tape and put it, put it down in there just so I'll have a recollection of, you know, if a prayer was answered for me or for the people I've been praying for. So, you know, they say count your blessings. I believe in doing it. The next section of my planner is the plan section. And this is another dashboard by um, My Promise Notes. I guess you're seeing a theme right now. I really like her shop. <laughs> so again, I'll have her, her shop listed below. Commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. So part of the praying that I do, it's me committing to the Lord what. I'm going to do and he'll help you get through it. So I'm going to turn away from this page because I really don't like that glare. And of course here, another one of my um, dashboards that I created for my personal use is plan. It says, and blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. And that's from Luke. And if I'm, I'm establishing things, it, it really helps me focus. Now, these are notes that I use to, as, as reminders of who I am, what I'm doing, that kind of thing. And it also helps me to determine how I'm, I'm doing. It says, uh, collect the things that command my attention, process um, what they mean and what to do about them, organize the results, review as options uh, for what I choose to do. A lot of the times with our planners, we become really inundated with what other people want us to do or the things that distract us. So dealing with your stuff, if you collect the things that command your attention and commanding your attention is not necessarily making a list, it's actually pulling out the things that you can do yourself, things that you can assign to other people, or things that you really don't need to do. You can toss them. There are, there are some things that I don't need to do on a daily basis that I toss. I don't watch television every day because there are other things that require my attention. That's not to say that I don't binge on Netflix over the weekend or if there is a series that comes, but I literally sit down and I plan out the time when I'm going to do those things so that I can put my focus on them and and not and enjoy life. 
So this is how. And then you also have to consider consider your roles. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. I'm a minister. I'm a public relations professional. I'm a writer. Um, I'm a journal company owner. And I'm a friend. There are other aspects to me, but those are my primary responsibilities and roles in life. So I like to have a constant reminder as I set my processes together. And this is just how this is broken down. Um, I use a lot of the self-management. I don't believe in time management. You cannot stop the, the, the earth from rotating um, on its axis. You, you, don't, you, you, you don't have any control over, the, over time, but you, what you do have control over is yourself. And I, I think getting things done is a really, um, it's, it's tried and it's true because a lot of people use this, this concept, but this is based on, this quick reference card is based on um, the book by David Allen. I had to buy a new copy because I loaned my copy out, but this is my new copy that I need to go through and mark up again. Um, but this concept is a really good concept for those of us who really want to practice better self-management. And I'll link where I received the, I'll link to the book and I'll link to this quick reference card um, from DIYplanner.com. And here is a brain dump. It's my brain dump page. Over here, I used to keep a brain dump sheet, but what I found, I was spending too much time printing when I actually have a ridiculous amount of notebook paper that I can use to get this done. So when I brain dump, because I throw it away anyway, so I brain dump here using this triggers list. It's been working for me for the past couple of years, but this is for an online business brain dump. It works for other, every business or most businesses nowadays has an online component. But what I found is I don't compartmentalize my brain dump. So when I brain dump, I also have to think about what I'm doing in my home, what I'm doing with my kids, what I'm doing with my husband, what I'm doing at church, those types of things. So it, I'm, I'm going to update this, but this is a really good one that comes from um, Strange Charmed. Um, the owner of Strange Charmed is Alexis, and she's known all across the internet as... Um, Miss Trenchcoat, and I said it that way because that's the way she says it on her YouTube channel, and I think it's pretty cool, so I just said it because I wanted to say it while I was talking, so yeah, there it is, and the next part of my um, plan section is, and I haven't done this section, I held off on doing it until I re recorded this video because I really didn't want to I wanted to have this because a lot of this is going to have personal information. Of course, my word of the year will go here. My scripture of the year will go here. And I'm going to decorate this page a little bit too. You know, I like pretty things. And everything won't be black and white. But I, I use a neutral background so that I can, so that I have a place to decorate. And of course, for each one of my goals that I've kind of jotted down and started thinking about, I set my goal. I ask myself, why do I want it? Normally here, I put my um, scripture, and I want to make sure you can see the page. So I think I'm going to turn my light down just a little bit so you can see the page a little bit better. And I'm going to zoom in some. Okay, so I'm going to flip this over to the side a little bit. So here, you write your goal. Then I ask myself, why do I want this? And here, I usually put a scripture, but because everything is so scripture heavy, I'm going to write here this year. How would I feel if I received this goal? This is one of the things that I do with some of my um, coaching clients where, you know, sometimes we say we want them and we know uh, why we want them, but we don't understand the reward of at the end. So I'm going to ask myself here, how will I feel when I reach this goal instead of putting a scripture because I have the scriptures already here. And I may even include scriptures in this part, but I also want to think about how I'll feel when I get this goal. And it's only a dream if you don't have a plan for it. So the key task um, to reach this goal. I like to put more milestones here simply because there are big things and little things and the little things are just tasks, but your milestones are the things that get that moves you along to reaching your goal. So I have a few pages of these. I probably won't use them all. This is 
my goal tracker. So if you noticed on my goal planning, it has action tasks that need to happen on a monthly basis. Um, one of the things that I have come to realize is the importance of breaking things down and hold, having an overall view. So this is where this goal tracker comes in. It's quarter one, two, three, and four. And then after I have everything set up with the themes for the quarter and the, the action task, I can go back and I can fix I can set my goals, my actual goals for the quarter, because these are more, these are tasks and milestones that I have to reach. But these are particularly my quarterly goals that I'll write out here. It's four quarters in a year, four boxes. And this is my monthly dashboard. I do this every month. And I won't say I do it every month because in most cases, I have three months of this in, in my planner. But what happens is in perpetual calendar, I don't, I didn't take the time to put the numbers here. I'll probably just write the numbers going down um, when I get this all the way set up for January. But one of the things, one of the reasons I like having to, having this is, is that as I'm going about my time, one, I know I have some of this from November, but since I was starting a new planner, I don't have it. But there are things I need to get done this month and they're going to go here and I'll be able to look in my planner as I get those done. I can refer to this as I plan for every week in the month and set time aside because if you run a task list like this, because these are my key tasks that I have to get done. And this is generally related to some item that's on my um, quarterly goals. These are big things, but these are things that I might need to, to get done. Um, for example, I need to clean out my linen closet this month. So that's a thing that I need to do. It's not necessarily a key task. One key task that I have to get done, I really have to finalize my business plan for the year. I have some ideas, but my business plan has to be finalized. My book and product release plan, my book plan, book release plan for the year needs to be done. And my product release plan for first quarter needs to be done for my sticker shop. And But those would be key tasks versus things to do. My next section is due. This time, my main, the, the dashboard on vellum is something that I created. Um, I love Proverbs 31. It fuels me as a, as a woman. And the, well, the scripture that I'm using um, this year is Proverbs for this part of due is Proverbs 31, 16 and 17. It says, she considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hand, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. All of this coincides to who I am. It says she considers a field and buys it. She didn't need permission from anyone. Not her husband, not her friends, not her family, not the general public. She considered. And when she considered, she was able to act. Act. I believe in having good counsel, but I also believe that God places things in us and he speaks to us. So you, in other words, I have this for me because I'm telling myself that I don't need anyone else's permission for the things that I've been called to do relating to my purpose. Here in my doing section, a lot of the times I'll take some of the items that, that are really pressing and I'll write them here. Um, and it just stands out. It looks so cute. Again, everything I do is going to probably be red, black, or gray um, what, from a productivity standpoint. Now, I do pretty planning, and you'll see some more of those videos. And, of course, do. Um, there's a scripture for this section. It says, and whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. So that's my do. And in the do section, it's break, broken down into three sections. These are the only right tabs, right, on the only side tabs that I keep. Um, the only place that I need to get to immediately in my planner is my current week. And I just use a cute little paper clip so that I can get there. But I have the do section broken up with, with if you can probably see it. I'm going to zoom in a little. If you can, you can probably see it. Um, I'm trying to get my lighting a little bit better. 
So here on the side, you can see I have calendar, budget, and reading. Calendar. Again, I don't keep my tabs on. That's the only thing I really dislike about Happy Planner is those monthly tabs. I know a lot of people love them. I really don't care for them very much um, because I don't go to my monthly calendar on a daily basis. This is what the monthly calendar looks like in here. Um, I started decorating it but didn't want to finish it because I knew that I wanted to make this video. Um, and, and I'm using a girl with gold girl with goals by the happy planner it's an it's not an actual planner I hope they turn it into one it's actually an insert and I think four months come in each packet for this one because it's so many pages so that's my monthly overview um, they have goal setting pages that I've already decorated um, and then after your goal setting pages um, you have a running task list. So what, what I like to do is after I do a brain dump, things that I'm going to take care of during the course of the month, I can write them in here. And I already have a few items over here, which is why this page is covered. But it's pretty much the same thing as this over here. After task list, you see this right in this section. And then you have the, the task area for your task list. And I don't know how well you can see that because of my lighting, but... You can see it that way. So you have your task list there. The next page I want to show you, because that other monthly spread has some personal items in it, I'm going here. And this is what the layout looks like. This is actually, it's a catch-all planner, um, but I do most of my business-related tasks in here. So... In order to get everything done, I use a, I now use a, a planner that is, that, that's an hourly planner. So it starts at 7 a.m. and ends at 7 p.m. Every appointment, anything that has to be done on a weekly basis, I can see what needs to be done based on my task list, but I can also consider my appointments when I'm planning my schedule. The next part of this is, which is my favorite, and I'm hoping that they continue this planner because what, what I realized is that I have a lot of tasks that need to happen, but I also need to track my time. And it's difficult to track time and task on the same page. And I don't like going to a bunch of different pages, but I don't take a, a, enough independent notes to warrant a daily page. So here is it has eight boxes and it has your weekly focus, things to follow up on in the week of. Love this planner. I hope I can find some more of the inserts because they're sold out. Um, more I might have to make them. Don't know yet. But here you have eight boxes. I either usually put something decorative here or I'll um, if I have a lot of things that's related to home, which is this week that I will, I, 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 I decorate it. This is Monday, Monday through Sunday. And then over here, I'll keep everything related to home and family in this section and everything related to all of my business tasks will go here. And of course, this planner comes with a couple of notes pages. And of course here, upcoming projects. This is my budget planner. I did take a few pages out of here because um, it had information for debt, debts I have, information for my credit report. So I took all of those pages out, and I'm using the Savvy Saver this, this year. This is my first time using it. I was using the old inserts. I haven't decided what I'm going to do um, with this page yet. So if you have any ideas, let me know. You know what? I, mm, I, I got to think of, about that. So, of course, it has the perpetual calendar for all 12 months. And I hit this page. You'll see this at the end of this month. But I like for everything relating to a particular month to go together. And this is separate in the Happy Planner. I don't like, that's one of the things I don't like about the Happy Planner. But I covered it up. And some of the things that I need to plan for financially, I can just put on this page here. And this is the January in monthly. Again, I cut the tabs off. Don't like them. 
So that's my January monthly overview. I haven't done this part yet because I know I was making this video. And I know some people like to see the actual, what the planners look like. So I included it here. This is my, of course, this is monthly overview page here where you have all of your bills listed, what you're saving, um, what you've spent, all of that. So that's there. This, I don't use it the way that they intend for us to use it. I'm going to, I actually have a, a header that I created to cover this. This is, of course, going to remain, the, this is remains the category, and this is the, the description area, amounts and balance. I use these more as a ledger, and I end up with a page left over every month simply because I don't make a lot of spending out of my main account. Um, I give myself an allowance every week that goes on my cash app card, my, the money that, that I can have for myself. I can do anything I want to do with. This is my, this is the main bill account that I track here. Um, so I don't keep my personal money that I shop with, with our family bills that you, I don't need to track that. I just need to know how much I transferred over into that particular um, account. So that'll show as a transfer and I can do with it whatever I want to do with it. It's almost like the cash envelope, but not. <laughs> and here, um, notes and things. Again, I can plan if I have any projects coming up that I want to plan for the house. I can just put things here. If I have to make a phone call, if I have issues with my bank account, I can write all of this stuff here. And um, I don't keep I don't keep receipts for major purchases in, purchases in here because you have to be able to go back and look at them. And of course, this is my overview and I don't use it for next month. I use it for the current month so I can put my goals here, things that I need to remember here and my unexpected spends in different notes. Most of the time it's something dealing with the kids, to be honest. So this is my reading. And um, the reading section I keep in here because I get paid to read. So a lot of the times I, 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 I'm a book reviewer for Publishers Weekly. So most of the time there's two books a month. But I also like to read on my own self-help books. So anything that is nonfiction that is not necessarily religion based is in here. And this is I'm still using the 18 month planner. Um, the 18 month reading plan from the Happy Planner. And of course, that's January. DGPR is my next section, as you see. Nothing's in there because I removed everything. Client business, I know I need to see that. Notes, I keep a notes section. And my last section in here is my reference section. Nothing is in here because this, all of this information is re related to. Um, it's personal information or things that I use on a daily basis to, to run my run my company um, that I just need quick access to that that I that is a duplicate of what's in my um, my my procedures manual. So my last page. Thanks for sticking with me during this, you guys. So this is the last section, and I really like it. Um, again, I love having the pockets now. One of my friends, actually my planner bestie, uh, Shalandria Wright, she actually designs these at um, Shalandria's Creations. It's an Etsy shop and I'll have it connected below. This is my first time since I've been married having stationery with my first name on it. We've had monogrammed items with our family information on it, but this year um, I realized that a lot of the times we can, I've realized this for a while, so in certain areas I'm really making sure that I don't forget about me. And I can use this because one of the goals, one thing that I do every year, I send out four handwritten no, written notes or cards every month and I can use this for some of them. This is just a sheet of paper. I don't have anything connected to this, to this like I do in the front cover. Here, um, I keep <laughs> index cards in my planner because I do a lot of reading. I have index card in all of my planners. Um, health and, I have them everywhere. And that's because I keep what um, is called a commonplace 
box. It's a play on the commonplace notebook, but I realized I had so many notebooks. I wasn't filling them up. And a lot of the information that ended up being in the notebook wasn't there. So I created a commonplace box out of this huge plastic photo box that has, I think, 12 different um, smaller bo photo boxes in it. And they're all labeled. And when I'm reading something, I can make a note. And after I go back through these every month, I can decide if it's something that I want to keep and place in my commonplace box or if something I just was caught up in in the moment and it was more of an emotional attachment. But as a writer um, and a creative, I read a lot and having a way to organize the things that inspire me, especially when I have writing assignments or when I'm ghostwriting, I can always go back and pull from those places for ideas, for quotes, and I'll know what book or where I received it from just from getting it on the card. Sometimes I'll even print it out from my computer and, and put the actual printout inside the commonplace box as well. This is, again, these two items. This is nothing really, just scrapbook paper. These are some of the items, most of these items here are items I use for productivity. I tend to use a lot of undated planners, so there you go with the date circles. Um, the hearts, these are my brand colors, so of course, um, it doesn't matter if my spread for the week is pink and green or orange and purple or anything like that. When I'm actually getting into my work week, this type of stuff appears because the planner, I like pretty planning, but I also have to be productive and track. And of course, you see how I use sticky notes throughout my planner. And these are just more dots that I use to, to cover things. I thank you so much for stopping by. If you have any questions about anything um, on the planner, leave a comment. If you need to know how to do something, or if you, if I don't, put links to everything I've used and you really want something or you need more information about something, just let me know and I'll get the information to you. Again, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to follow the page, get notifications so you can stop back by. And if you have a channel, please link below. I'm always looking for anything planner, productivity, and lifestyle management um, related. Thank you so much for stopping by.